Hi everyone. Welcome back to my craft room. My name is Whitney Lucas. I'm with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots. And today's video is going to be a quick little um, accent wreath made out of magnolias, leaves, and a straw form. Um, and I'll show you right here's finished one because I am making two of these. Here's what the finished one looks like. I made this one just before I turned this record on, this video to record on. Um, basically, it is very few um, supplies, and it's going to accent a sign that I bought at Hobby Lobby. So I'm going to show you guys how fast this went. Very few supplies. I didn't even. I used tiny little bit of hot glue, um, and I'll show you exactly, guys, how how quick and easy this is going to be. So. Um, thank you again if everyone's returning. First off, I appreciate all of you guys. My YouTube subscribers have been growing and I appreciate every single one of you. I am over the moon about have the warm response that I'm getting. So again, thank you so much for your support and um, we'll continue to give you some good content. You guys just tell me in the comments below the things that you like, the things that you have ideas for, or suggestions, comments, tips, tricks, all of it is appreciated. Um, and from there, we'll just keep growing and making this better and better for you. So first off, I want to show you guys the sign that I bought. I got um, some some good stuff. Um, Hobby Lobby has put out all of their um, regular spring and summer decor. I guess more spring than summer, but uh, Christmas is gone now in the stores. Uh, this video is being recorded today's January 2021. I think it's January 21st today. And... Um, Basically, all the Christmas is gone. They've brought out a little bit of Valentine's and Easter is coming out. Spring spring goodies are coming out. And so um, they have a lot of home decor out. You may have seen if you follow me on Facebook that I had a lot of different Facebook posts of some purchases that I'd made at Hobby Lobby uh, for my home. But their decor this year is super cute. And, of course, you guys can see over my shoulder right here. This is going to go in my living room above my windows. I have about... I have three large windows in my living room with some white shutters and there's been an empty spot up above there for years that I wanted to, to fill and now this year everything super popular farmhouse a lot of uh, you can see here a lot of cotton a lot of linen and burlap and 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 everything has been very very popular recently so I found this sign and I absolutely love it so I'll show you guys right here this farmhouse sign um, I absolutely love that green wreath sorry words huh that green wreath in the middle it is actually a little bit raised here I'll, I'll bring it up so you guys can see it here it is actually the design on that right there it's a little raised if i can kind of push it this way you might be able to see you can't see it has a little bit of detail on it there's uh maybe some some thicker uh, type acrylic type see-through paint is on these couple leaves here now because this is going on top of a wall that's going to be high up sort of you might not get the chance to actually see that type of detail but the actual the piece itself I mean it's actually gorgeous and you'll see here um, there's my little tag I just bought this yesterday uh, I was originally $49.99 and they're doing 50% off of every all of their their home decor so I got this for $25 guys you can't be upset for $25 you guys know I like a deal right so this particular sign isn't going to be quite as long as I need it to be since I have such a big expanse. Um, now I will put pictures up at the end of this video, so stay tuned. Um, and if you feel the need to skip through, um, if you go to the end, you'll see some, I'll put some still pictures up at the end so you can see after it's hung how these two wreaths are going to complement and actually make the piece longer so it fits in the space I want it to fit in. This sign is not long enough, but it's a weird type of space I have above my sofa in my kitchen. I'm sorry, in my living room. Um, I tested out other pieces and I just wasn't happy with them, but I love this actual wreath um, design here. This wreath in the middle for the O and farmhouse. It's just, it's beautiful. I love it. So this is going in there and what I plan to do is I'm going to set this back down over here. The way we can refer to it, because the wreath itself here is also a little bit of inspiration as to why I wanted to make this this particular piece here. So I'm going to repeat this circle on either side and it's going to elongate the actual uh, piece for the space I need it in. So this is the completed one that I've already made and I plan on hanging it on this side of it and then the other one will go on the other side above my above my uh, windows in my living room, my, right above my sofa. So what we'll do is we're going to create another one of these. Super, super simple. 
and uh, really quick to do. So what I do is I'm going to take you from start to finish so you're going to see everything. I don't cut anything out. I don't uh, stop and give you clips here and there. You're going to see me start and finish the whole project so that way you might get a better idea if you ever come across an issue, if you ever have a problem where something doesn't work out. You'll see me work through it and then it might be able to give you a little bit more um, uh, trouble, troubleshoot ideas, you know, those things. If you ever come across a, an, an issue where you, you, have, you come up on a hiccup of, on your idea or your project. So what I'm going to do now is, um, you guys have probably seen, this is my one of my few videos that's just for YouTube. I Normally I do Facebook Lives. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my, this is my new camera I'm using also, guys. So let me know in the comments below if you like the quality. This should be much more clear uh, for anybody watching on a larger device or a computer or TV. Um, this should be really good quality. So you guys let me know in the comments how all this is going. So with all the popularity in the Magnolia wreaths, I've seen them pre-made in the stores. And the one that I saw at Michael's, I'm sorry, at Joanne, wow you guys, Michael's, Joanne's, next in line, Hobby Lobby, was on a, um, now there's the side view, you guys see I covered the side. Um, it was, the frame itself was on a grapevine. And since it was store made, you can tell that it was one of those things that was prefabricated somewhere in a plant, more than likely China, guys. And it's no problem. Everything we buy here in the States usually is all made in China. So it is what it is. But we can make something gorgeous that you can tell was not store bought. This, you can tell, has your own touch in it, has your own flair. Your own personal talent goes into these. And love also, your own talent and love, right, especially. Um, this was super simple and it only took a few items. So what I did was I used a straw wreath form. And you guys may have seen that from a previous video I made for the tulip wreaths. Um, I used these forms because the styrofoam forms were not available. And the ones I found were a little bit too expensive and sort of thin. Um, and a little bit cheap for the project. For the price, they were expensive, but the actual make was a little bit too wrong. But I used this styrofoam form for some tulip wreaths. You guys can check that out on my YouTube channel also. I have all those listed in there too. You can view that from start to finish. Um, so I thought uh, what I did was I bought a 10 inch straw wreath. Now this is the one I used for the mini tulips and this one is an 8 inch wreath. But for the project itself I knew that when your finished project is going to be a little bit bigger than the wreath form that you buy. So I figured that this particular sign here, of course I had it with me in the store when I did my shopping, I figured that that was a decent size since the, pro the finished project will be a little bit bigger. Whereas you see this 8 inch is, is just too small for the size of this. That's how I basically will go through and I'll look for things in a store if I'm going to make a project for myself at home. If I have the actual piece with me or there's been times guys where I will bring my piece of whatever it is with me in the store. I've brought fabric in, I've brought samples of other things in. You guys have probably done the same thing too. If you're looking, especially if it's more like a fabric piece, um, you're going to want to bring that stuff in to match it. I've brought yarn in if I've ran out of yarn for a project, blanket, whatever. I've brought yarn in to make sure that the lots, the dye lots will be somewhat close to each other because a lot of times that stuff doesn't work. Don't be embarrassed. They, I mean, they know that you're in there and you're serious because you brought your piece because you're looking for something. So don't be afraid to bring stuff in. I would bring that into another store if I had to. I basically have no shame when it comes to crafting and creating, making arrangements. Um, basically, I'm on a mission and I'm serious about it. And if everyone else wants to look at you a little funny, let them because your day will continue. And then at the end, you're going to have a gorgeous piece. So the best part about this was that everything I bought for this project was at Hobby Lobby. Everything you can get to make this project, will you can put in one cart at Hobby Lobby. If you choose to, you can even get the exact same picture because I only bought this a day ago. And again, today, if you're watching a playback, or sorry, this is a YouTube video, so there is all is a playback. If you're watching this, um, today is January 21st, 2018. So I bought this on January 20th, 2018. Um, they still have these in stock, so you guys have at it, have fun. That's why I bought this size. This is a 10 inch straw wreath form. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover the, the straw just in case something peeks through. You can see here on my finished piece, nothing is peeking through. So this is wired ribbon here. Um, nothing's peeking through. That's what you see from the sides. So once it's up against the wall, that's all you're going to see. Every once in a while, see like here you can see through, but what I've done on the back is I've covered the straw with some of this uh, burlap ribbon. Actually, it's a, what does it say it is? It is 
Oh, it just says jumbo roll. Um, to me, this is a burlap type ribbon. You guys can see here the type of ribbon it is. It's a burlap ribbon. It's wired. That's all I had. I have regular burlap, but it's really wide and it wouldn't... When you, when you want to wrap things around a circular item, you don't want to go with a really wide ribbon because then it, the wrap just won't look right. It'll be very lumpy and off-center, kind of crooked. You don't want to do that. So basically, maybe two and a half inches is the biggest I will go. I wouldn't do three or four inch ribbon. Um, if you try it, if you have it on, on hand, it's like just an extra piece you got lying around. Try it and see if you can make it work. In my experience, it would not work, so I just stick with about two and a half inches, the widest that you really want to wrap it with. And again, you can see me do more of the wrapping of these forms if you watch my tulip video. So it's a tulip wreath that I did. So here's our finished project. I'm going to lay this down off to the side, okay? And then I'm going to pan down and we're going to get started, guys. So basically, um, all this project is is a 10-inch straw form. These are very affordable. I think this was like two or three ninety nine, um, and then we're going to use these bundles of magnolia leaves that you can get at Hobby Lobby. A uh, regular price is seventeen ninety nine, but basically every, everyone knows. And if you don't, I'm gonna get you, let you in on a good, a great um, thing. Hobby Lobby puts all of their floral stems and bushes on sale fifty percent off every other week. So if you're there and you notice that this, where all the fancy stems are and then the aisle where all the bushes for the seasonal items, they don't see any signs that are on sale, if you can wait till the next week, wait till next week because they will all be 50% off. It is a pattern. They stick to it. 50% off one week, regular price the next. 50% regular price. 50% regular price. So I got these half off. And basically with that, that particular one, I was able to get pretty much all of it except for I needed an additional three leaves off of another bush. So you only have to really buy one of these if you only want to make one 10 inch wreath. And then um, at the end, you guys, I guess I can, you know, I could do is I can count these up and I can count them up to see how many actual leaves you need for this size wreath. Now, if you want to do a bigger wreath, obviously you'll need to buy more bunches. So $17.99 is $18. So basically um, got this for, it's eight and eight. Oh my gosh, you guys, eight. Uh, Half that is four, so 18, four, five, nine dollars. Oh my gosh, wow, that took me way too long to do that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so this is nine dollars a bunch. Um, I bought more than I needed because I wasn't sure what I, what I needed for the project. But basically, I can tell you for sure you're going to use one bundle plus three leaves for a 10-inch wreath. Um, so if you need to, if you want to make two of them, in this instance, I needed to buy three because I needed an additional three leaves just to cover a side. But there might be some repositioning you could do to try to figure that out or to try to get things spaced apart. Um, then what I did was for the small bow I put on the front, uh, this is just a one and a half inch ribbon that I purchased at mm, Sam's Club this year. This was their Christmas ribbon they put out, guys. So that's what I said. Never think that whatever your marketing is is what you have to stick with. Just because it says spring, summer, fall, winter, Christmas, Whatever their marketing labels are, ignore that and just look at the meat and potatoes inside. What exactly does this look like? Because this can be used for so many things. This was a Christmas ribbon, but I'm using it now for a spring-summer farmhouse wreath. But this is also great for any fall item. Any, this would be good for weddings. If you're doing a you know burlap and lace type wedding, a country theme, anything like that. So this is an actual um, very versatile project. Uh, supply. So 50 yards of it will, will really go far for you. So think about that because remember these were I got this for now remember I don't have a, a Sam's Club card so they kind of gave you a 10% price hike so I paid $8.29 for this but even then $8.29 guys for 50 yards of ribbon is a smoking deal. So that's the part I used on the front and then this little pick here is a pick of cotton that I got at Hobby Lobby. You can get a larger stem on their stem aisle, which would be 50% off if you need more. This particular guy I purchased, and this is an extra leftover. I had exactly two left, so it worked out for my finished wreath and this one, adding just a small accent to the front that I wanted. Uh, this was an actual little extra that I bought for a Christmas tree that I put on my desk at work. And you can also take a peek at pictures of that on my Facebook page um, if you guys need or would like to. Take, take a look, check me out, give me a like, a share, a comment, whatever. So 
one pick. This is in the actual uh, floral aisle where all the little picks are. That's kind of almost a wedding aisle um, in, at Hobby Lobby, if you guys are familiar with that. It's like a ribbons wedding, and then there's all these little tiny roses and little picks. These, these um, cotton picks are on that aisle, too. I think they were either $2.99 or $3.99 each. Now, I don't believe they were on sale when I purchased them, but you can find them on sale, and if you have to, use your 40% off on it. But there's always a way to get a small little detail discount. And four dollars anyways or three dollars is not not that bad for basically the, the end project here you're going to have a very full beautiful reef that you can't find in the stores to buy like that and you'll see just how quickly it goes now you guys hear me talking a lot which i'm really good at and you guys know that because i know a lot of you you got you guys like it some of you guys some of you guys don't but that's okay uh so you'll see how quick it is to get this on there at the end i didn't use but very minimal amounts of hot glue and then just like the tulip wreath, um, I used floral pins. So you're going to use floral pins on this. And this is a floral pin if you're not familiar with it. It's got sharp points on one end and a little bit of a, a like a U-shaped thing in the middle here. This is a floral pin. Okay, so that's it. Magnolia leaf bush, sorry, magnolia leaf bush, straw wreath form, two different types. I did this ribbon as an eye accent. This is the ribbon I'm wrapping the form with. I've already cut some of my magnolia leaves off. Floral pins, a little bit of hot glue. That's it. And of course, if you ever need to know any more of this stuff, I'll have all of these supplies listed in the description of the video below. So you guys take a look at that description. Um, there's links to all of my accounts in there as well, so follow me. You can go to my Etsy shop. Um, if you guys would like and you see this and you don't really want to make one yourself, you go ahead and contact me through Etsy and I can make one for you. This is kind of stuff that's always around. Um, I might actually post one anyways. These magnolia wreaths are extremely popular and they're really in right now. So this year it's going to be more farmhouse, more cotton, more magnolia leaves. Super, super popular. So I'm going to show you guys down here. I'm going to pan down and we're going to get started on the wreath, guys. So hopefully this is a good shot of my workspace that you guys can see here. So what we have started is there's my floral pins. And then here's my extra rag magnolia leaves. Now I already cut all of these off of this bush. Okay. This is what it looks like when you purchase it. You can see here how full it is. Okay. And then that's what I've done to it already. I've cut everything off except three. Okay, guys. So what I've done is I'm going to put these right here just to hold it. And I'll just show you kind of close up how I cut them off, right? Okay. So you're just going to take your wire cutters. These are... Um, in the, I bought these in the floral department, I mean, maybe two or three years ago at Joann's. But you can find these types of, of supply tools at any hardware store, or you can get them online on Amazon. You can get them anywhere. It's just a pretty heavy-duty set of wire cutters. And I'm cutting the leaf off right underneath the base right here on this guy. So I'm just placing my wire cutters under there and then clipping that off. And you'll see how fast that comes off there. And then I'll show you again here. If you can see here, this is where I've got my wire cutters. They pop it off. Do it again here. Pop it off. And that's what you're left with. These bushes, I've noticed I don't really have much to save off of here, so I will throw these. Longer stems, I do save all of those because those are always good to be reused. Um, so there's pretty much the one bundle. There's one bundle of leaves. That's how it looks. It's actually pretty pretty. It's really pretty to look at since it's kind of neat and organized the way they stack, right? <laughs> but again, that's just me. I'm kind of a little weird like that, right? So what we're going to start with is wrapping the actual wreath form, okay? So uh, take your ribbon and do this here. And you're going to pick a starting point And unroll it a little bit. Also, you're going to want to make sure that your actual ribbon spool fits through your wreath. This is a little bit of a tight fit, you guys can see here. Uh, but if you were to pick something, maybe like, remember when I did the, this is what I used for the tulip wreaths. Obviously, this is going to fit through here for wrapping it. You see how this is the wrapping motion? That's going to fit perfectly okay. It's the same thing as when I used an 8-inch form. This was a little bit of a tight fit, but do you see, guys, it still fits through there. So that's something you also want to be conscious about to make sure that your ribbon spool will fit through the form that you're using and buying. Um, so that's something to think about. I didn't honestly know anything about that till I tried to do this other one earlier today. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Learn from me. 
So all I'm doing is placing my ribbon flat and then I'm going to put the wreath form on it. Now this straw wreath is starting to unravel just a little bit, which is the, the plastic on it's unraveling, which is fine. I'm going to do here is I'm going to place the wreath flat on top of that ribbon. I'm going to pull the ribbon up here and I'm going to take one of my floral pins and just place that right there down in the center. Now if you want, you can place a little bit of hot glue on that. That's not going to go anywhere. And then now what you're going to need to do is I'm going to have to kind of spread that out a little bit with the tip of the glue gun. Uh, let that cool off. Since this is a burlap ribbon, it is see-through, so it's got a lot of holes in it, so that, that, rib, that glue will come through a little bit. So we're just going to kind of let that dry and cool off a little bit more, otherwise you're going to burn your fingers, guys. Be careful because I have done that many times. So here I'm going to start with, I keep my spool kind of like it's being rolled up. I keep it up like this. And what you'll find is easier is you'll bring this around, pull it through your wreath form, and then you're going to be pulling that kind of tight. I'm using my hand to hold here, and I'm pulling it taut back this way. So then now you're going to ready to pull it over. As I pull it over here, if you can see under, I put my finger here to hold down the ribbon because now you're losing slack. And then I pull it back through again. Remember, this is a little bit of a tight fit with this spool, but it still works. And then now, since I have a little bit used on this spool, I'm grabbing in the middle to kind of pull tight. Again, you want to keep a good tension on here so you have a nice wrap. Pull that over, hold it with this left hand, pull it back through, and then just keep the process going. So as I pull them through, I'm putting my hand on the next row. And then I pull this one over, if you see here, and then I'm moving my hand on top of it. And that's how I'm holding my work tight as I keep rolling and raveling around here. Oh, and if that happens, roll with it, guys, because it looks like I'm going to run out. That is not a problem because I have another set. So here's where the here's where the best part of the videos come in. A lot of times these are issues that you might not come across in your regular work. So this is where I want you guys to learn from me or I want you guys to give me suggestions. So since this spool is done, I'm going to go ahead and just... Floral pin this guy in right here. All right, I'm gonna put a little glue on that so that holds it right there. And I'm gonna go get my other spool of ribbon. And now I can say I finished a spool of ribbon, guys. So just one sec, I'm gonna go grab that other spool. Okay, same ribbon. You see here the thickness is the same. It's a still two and a half inch wide ribbon. This is their fall ribbon that I purchased uh, last year. Um, so actually they, they carry this year round, but do you see what I mean when I told you guys before about marketing? This is the year round look, and this is their fall look. This is still 30 feet here, 30 feet, and right here, 30 feet. So they're marketing the same ribbon for fall that they do year round. Not a problem. There's nothing detrimental about that. But what I'm saying is a lot of times if you ignore this particular marketing and you just look at what's in the middle of that spool, there are so many great things that can continue to happen. So what I'm going to do is start my new ribbon or my new spool right off in the same spot. Let me just find where this opens at, guys, so I can cut it. Okay, there we go. And not a lot of this is going to show, guys, so it's perfectly okay to um, leave this little piece right here in that has that little bend in it because we're not using this for a bow. We're using it to cover. So for the same thing we just did to finish or to start, it's just like you're restarting another one. So you're using an extra floral pen, but again, nothing is you know crazy into the world going to go wrong. Just going to put a little dab of glue. Nothing crazy on there. Let that kind of dry a little bit. And then we're going to continue wrapping. And see, this spool is a little bit smaller, uh, so it kind of fits through just a little bit differently than the other one did, but it's still same premise. Be careful. Make sure your spools fit through the wreath you're making. If I was using this on a small 8-inch wreath, it wouldn't work out. I'd have to. You'd have to cut the ribbon in strips. 
and just guess at how many times you'll need to wrap it through or how many, you know, how many feet you're going to need. It's going to have a little bit of a problem getting that through right there. But that's why your left hand holds the tension as you're trying to fight with that little, that, this large spool to get that through. So wrap it, pull it, and then it's a habit for me to kind of just roll it back up. As it, you pull it through, then you roll it back up, and you're able to then pull on it to keep the tension tight. <clears throat> and we're just going to continue on until we hit our starting point. You guys, let me know if you like this format since this is new compared to my other videos. Um, this is a brand new camera that we bought, so again, that that... The quality should be good, but um, as far as the angle is concerned, I know you guys are used to seeing me and more of my workspace, but um, this is the best I can get with this new stuff. I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm sure there's a lot more to it, but um, everything, you know, everything's still a learning. There's still a learning curve with all of it. So now that I've reached my end point, I'm going to stop. I'm going to pull up enough to kind of give it a nice fold over. So that's where I want it to fold. I'm going to cut it about an inch from there. And what I mean by fold over is I'm going to put a hem on this. So here's my finished piece, and then there's the extra ribbon. So I'm going to pull this towards me. I'm going to put a little, about a one inch hem on it. Bring it up. It's still a little bit too long, so I'm going to put maybe an inch and a half, two inches on there. And this is what I mean by a hem, because I like it to look nice on the back. You don't necessarily have to. If it's your preference, you don't really care uh, what the back of it looks like. It's going to go on your own wall in your own home. That's fine. If you're making this for a loved one or a friend or a gift or even a client if you're you know, selling this into your business. I like it to look a little nice and finished on the back. So this is what you end with. That's what the back looks like. There's your floral pin. You can put glue on this if you want. I'm not going to because of the back of it. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's, hold on. A dab of glue isn't going to hurt. So I'll put a dab here. Again, this isn't going to show. Let's put a little bit of glue on there. And then this is what your form looks like. Now, granted, we had a little bit of a hiccup because we, we ran out of ribbon halfway through. But this is what your form now looks like. So the straw doesn't show. You don't have to see it if you don't want to. Um, and then also, um, if something should peek through, you get to see this pretty burlap. And um, that makes all the difference, in my opinion. It looks, it looks much better. So the next thing we're going to start on is... We're going to make sure this is cooled off. Let me touch it. It's a little tacky still. Um, what I thought about is, since we have this, the back of this, this was supposed to normally be the front, you could say. That's prettier. So I'm going to use this as my, um, my front because we're going to attach all of these leaves to it so no one can see anything. So basically pick a starting point. Any starting point will do. Put your first leaf down flat. Grab a floral pin, and you can stick these sharp ends through the bottom of the leaf, and it goes all the way down into the form right there. You can see how that looks. That's basically everything you're doing. Uh, now, what I did, actually, you guys don't have to take that out, is because I didn't, um, I didn't put it in at an angle enough. You want basically every leaf, one up and one down the whole way around your, your, your piece, which is how you're going to get more coverage. So I needed to angle this more upward or in towards the wreath here. So I'm going to put this to the same holes I made in the leaf and then push that back down into the form. So now the next one I place down going to the left. If you can see this one goes to the right, this one's going to go to the left more. And then once you get that uh, first initial one in, so just push those down. Basically, all you're doing is repeating this pattern all the way around. <clears throat> and then you can pick your spacing if you want them closer together, if you want them further apart. Basically, all you're doing is making sure you're putting enough distance between the two to cover up your floral pins that you don't want seen on each side. So I usually would go about halfway to the middle part, the halfway piece of this leaf here. And then just find that little sweet spot because you got a, a good amount of ribbon underneath here. You got all kinds of things. And then that's why I push that down with your thumb. I'm not putting glue on each sing every single one of these. If you guys look here, you've got such a good, I mean, you can hold that by that. It's not coming out because of the, um, 
It's gone through the set of burlap ribbon. It's gone through a, a decent amount of the straw wreath itself, plus the, the thickness of these leaves. They're a little bit foamy, but there's a, a good plastic coating on the outside of them. So they're not really, um, they're not really going to come apart. Uh, the, these floral picks are pretty thick. They're, gonna, they're not gonna come out. If you still are not comfortable with that, by all means, uh, place some glue on it. You can put glue on the back of your, your, your piece of your, your leaf here. Dab some glue on that and glue that to your piece here. Then also put the floral pin in and throw some glue on top of that if you want. I chose not to. Uh, it's an added step that I don't feel is really needed because this is a pretty sturdy, strong project. I'm also, for my own personal purposes, I am placing this um, on a wall high above my sofa above a window. Nobody is going to really be around this particular piece. There's no chance of any pets, animals, or people, you know, getting up there and messing with it, or, you know, if the kids should get a hold of it. That's not, it's not going to happen. It's not going to be in a really trafficy place in my home. It's going to be in a pretty secluded, non tra I mean, it'll be, it's obviously in a place where you can see it, but it's not going to be at risk of being bumped off the wall or anything like that. Like, it's not going to be, if, if you also have to think of it, like you, you hang your wreaths by a door, uh, whether or not, you, not necessarily the door slamming or anything like that, but normal opening and closing, you know, your house and everything, you get little shifts and things, that's normal, that happens. Um, um, things can come loose, things can fall off the wall. This particular piece is pretty sturdy, and I'm not really worried about that should it occur. Um, short of an earthquake, but you guys know I live in Las Vegas, so I get very, very, very seldom tremors from California when we do get them. Nothing bad. At least not from what we experience compared to where it's actually happening. <laughs> so just keep your pattern going. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Off to the left, off to the left, right, left, right. That's basically, if you guys can see here, that's the pattern I'm sticking with. And then I'll show you how you're going to need to get um, underneath a few of these guys once you start getting close to your starting point. Oh, I bent that one. I didn't know my own strength. Um, when you get to that starting point, you're going to have to lift these other leaves up. And I'm almost there. So here's where the starting point comes in, guys. So you take your next leaf and you're going to have to lift up your beginning piece. So this is what you've got mostly so far. That's what it's going to look like, right? Now you can still see the sides and you'll see what I did to cover that up. So here's my starting piece, right? You're going to lift this original first leaf up out of the way. And you're going to place this one right underneath it. You have to keep that out of the way here. I, you can use your thumb to hold that out of the way. Place your floral pin in, push it down, and then once you push that leaf back, it now looks like one solid piece. You can see the inner circle here has been completed by just by lifting that up. Uh, don't be intimidated by it. It's not. Um, it's not going to. It's, it's not a horrible or crazy difficult type thing. You're just using enough of the space around it to cover up. You know, the other one's fairly easy because of how close it is. Um, but that's basically how easy it is. You just pull things back. So that's it. You guys saw how pretty quickly that went. I was just kind of talking, but you're just grabbing, placing, grabbing, placing. Now, the only thing I thought of was when it's hanging on the wall, this is what you're going to see from the sides, the top, the bottom. I didn't, I mean, yes, we covered it so it looks nicer and you don't see the straw, but I'm not really wild about looking at that. So the back of it is nicer, obviously, if you see that. Um, and then also, if you're going to make one of these and place it on a window or a, or a storm door, something that has that's clear on the back, you'll see something that's very neat back here. But um, I don't want to see that from the side. So what I did was I just grabbed some the extra leaves and I started placing them flat against the wreath here. Okay, hold it down. Do the exact same thing. Place your floral pin in the very bottom between. I use using the, the, the vein of the leaf as a guide and just placing my floral pen on the end of each one of those. So I took my next leaf on and I put it down low enough so that the tip of this leaf is just covering this piece here so you're not looking at that floral pen. Now look what happens. This is what it looks like when it lays flat, right? 
but when it's not glued, this is what you see. So I'll show you guys, I put a dab of glue on it. So let me place this in. So there's the floral pen. There's me placing that in that guy, right? So what I need to do is put a dab of glue to hold that piece in. So all I'm doing here, and again, I'm using the middle vein as my guide for this. So look to see where your, your, your leaf goes to about right here. Okay, hold that back. I'm gonna put a little line of glue right down this middle piece here. And then I'm gonna use that leaf, fold that over, and then you just gotta hold it for a little bit. That's really all I did across the sides around the whole piece. And then that's the, uh, this is your end result. That's what it looks like. And it's nicer on the sides. Again, it's not the focal point of your piece that you're making, but um, it, gets the, uh, it gets the job done if you're looking to cover up a little bit of something that you might not think is, it's not the prettiest. You don't really want it to be right in your view, especially in my living room, it's going to be my focal point. It's going to be almost like a little conversation piece as well. Um, all this stuff is very uh, trendy right now as far as magnolia leaves and cotton. I absolutely love anything farmhouse, so that's why I particularly wanted to stick with this. And then I thought, you know, I'm seeing a lot of these magnolia leaves everywhere, but they're not, they don't look right. The store-bought ones just look really, um, they just look really bad, I guess. There's no other real, there's not really a nice way to put it. A lot of the store-bought ones are very uh, manufactured looking. They're very small. They don't, in my opinion, give a lot of good detail to what you want and they're not full they're very they're very sparse see-through not cute at all so I'm gonna make one myself uh, Hobby Lobby always has these magnolia leaves on hand and I've seen them for a while and just didn't know what to do with them um, you know there's times where I can I've used them for Christmas projects or in Christmas wreaths because obviously this is a really pretty green color it's a good big wide thick leaf to put in um, So I've had one of these, uh, you know, I've had a bush on hand just for um, adding, you know, accents to other pieces or arrangements, Christmas wreaths, that, oh, I'm putting glue in the wrong spot, you guys see, get, getting away from myself because I'm talking. But um, I just wanted to do something with this when I saw it, and then that sign was perfect, so that's basically what I, what I came up with. Um, it's taking a technique from another wreath I'd made and just applying it in a different way. So you guys can see that um, if you've already learned how to make these tulip wreaths, you'll look that a lot of this entire piece is a lot of that format and those techniques just recycled into a different type. You know, the wreath for the tulips is good for spring, Easter, Mother's Day gifts, those types of things. And this is really good for year-round, spring, summer, fall. This was actually year-round. You could leave this up in a, in a living room or in an office somewhere where you absolutely know you need um, to have a little bit of coverage. Now, see, I've ran out, so I still use the same amount. I'm going to have to clip a, probably about three of these off because this is about how much I have left to cover, if you see from here to here. So that's probably going to be about two or three leaves. So I'm just going to cut another three leaves off of one of these extra bushes I had. Let's see if the three will cover it and keep going. And then we're almost done, guys. I just have to show you how to, I did my bow, and we're going to keep going. Actually, I think I only need two. So I was able to space this out a little bit different. It's always Things are always just a little bit different. Nothing's ever 100% identical or exactly, but that's the best part of it. Nothing's supposed to be that way except for maybe butterflies. Butterfly wings, right? All right, guys, one more. Yep, just this one more. I didn't need three. I just needed two. So since this one is where my my starting point's right here, I'm going to hold this down. I'm, with my thumb, I'm going to put my floral pin in there, push that in. I'm going to glue this one down to the one behind it, like your normal pattern. Hold that down. And then I'm going to put glue under here on the one we just pinned in and then hold our starting leaf down on that. And so that's where you're finished. And you can kind of see, you get like a little peek here and there of that. Actually, no, you really can't. You're not really getting any peaks of anything in here. This wreath turned out very pretty. Also went a lot faster than my first one because I was just trying to figure out, is this going to work? Should I make a video on it? So these pieces are all held down. So now that's what you have on the sides. 
and then up against the wall these pieces will kind of flatten out a little bit like that so your piece will still hang up on the wall really really well so that's what you end up with okay there's your back there's your sides okay and there's your front so that's where you're ending with your piece here next is there's an extra one I didn't need to cut off. We'll just put that with that bush. So next off is, I did not cut this pick at all. All I did was take my little sticker off. There's a little blue sticker that comes on them from Hobby Lobby. And I just picked a point and I just laid it on there. You can adjust these guys later. They're all wired. You can bend them and move them later how you want them. So I just picked a point and I was, that's where I want to put this. I'm going to put this one right here. Now what I have going on is, since I have two wreaths already made, um, let me show you here. One is going on the left side and one is going on the right side. So on the left side, I want this piece to be on the left. So for this one that's going on the right, I'm gonna have to make sure that I put it on like that. So let's pretend this is on the wall. My picture is in between them and I need, now I picked one direction, if you see here, I picked one direction and I stuck with it. Same thing here. You're picking one direction and you're sticking with it. So that doesn't really bother me as much as far as if you're talking about, you know, uh, symmetry. The wreath is the wreath what it is, if that makes sense at all, guys. I picked one direction, one direction for the magnolia leaves. But I want the bow and the cotton pick to be on this side of this this one. My picture will be in the middle here. And then this side's going to have to go more on here. So I'm going to pick this side for this particular bow and pick if that makes sense, you guys. Um, again, leave me some comments and, and questions or tips or anything in the comments below. So if there's anything you're wondering about, we can always address it and I can, um, I can, I can respond back. I love seeing your comments, you guys. I love uh, looking at my YouTube uh, notifications and so many of them, you guys, are always so wonderful to me. And uh, keeps me going, makes me happy. So all I'm doing here is a very simple hand-tied bow. This is basically going to be similar to tying your shoes, guys. It's so easy. This is also wired ribbon. All I'm doing here is I'm dovetailing the end. And if you can see what I did here, you, if you don't know what a dovetail is, this is a dovetail. So you get the, um, that little V at the end that looks like a tail. So that's a dovetail. So what you do is you're taking your ribbon, you fold it in half so the wired edges are touching each other. Then you take your scissors and you cut diagonally from the folded inner piece out, up, out and up towards the wires, right? So I folded this in half and I'm cutting up and out, up and out towards the, from the fold to the wired edges. So then when you undo it, you have a dovetail. So here's what I did, guys. All I did was I got some extra slack on my spool. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to show you a little bit, because this is how I attached it in there. I kind of hid this guy inside my bow. So here, let me show you. I'm going to push this off to the side, and I'm going to get closer to you guys here. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Give you guys a really good view of what I'm going to do. Okay, so what I've done here is... I just took this piece, and I'm guessing how long I want this first um, tail to be. So actually, that's kind of short. So I forget I'm not making this for a wreath. I'm making this for my other wreath. My, um, I want it to be a little longer. So I'm going to pick maybe about that length. And nothing says you have to stay with that. If that's too long, you can cut it when you're done, right? So I'm taking and I'm pinching. And I'm making my first loop, pinching. And now, basically, you've got your first loop made. You guys, just pretend, since this also, very key thing, very important, this is not single-sided ribbon. This is basically double-sided ribbon. It's the same on one side as it is on the other. That's another key thing. If it's single-sided ribbon, it might not look right. You'd have to do a little bit more of twisting. So just, if you want to make this project particularly exactly like what I'm doing, make sure you've got double-sided ribbon, okay? And it's not hard to find. You just have to peek at it in the stores. Now you're going to pretend you're, you're tying your shoes, guys. So just wrap that piece around, right? It's just like tying a shoe. Wrap it around. If, unless you do the bunny ear method. If you do the bunny ear method, do the same thing. Get another loop, twist them around. I tie my shoes uh, non-bunny ear. I don't know what that's called. <laughs> so here you go. Wrap that around. And bring your loop through. 
just like tying shoes. Now it's going to look pretty messy. It's going to look like a little bit of a train wreck in the beginning. That's fine. You just want to get that knot in there. And since it's wired, um, you got a lot to work with. It'll be A-OK. -okay. Here is where I want to make sure I get my tail the length I want it. And then also what you're doing is this is your wraparound piece for your bow. You can kind of see here this is the bow after you've tied basically your, your shoe knot. What I do here is I take a floral pin, okay, and I am going to feed it through that piece. You see here? This is the front of your bow, okay? That's the front, so we're going to be tightening that to make it tighter. So once we tighten it, we want this to already be in. So what I did was I took a floral pin and I pushed it through, kind of brought it out like that. So now I have a floral pin in my bow. So once I tighten this and I pull on these two pieces, this floral pin is going to become my securing point into my wreath. Okay, so here's where the magic happens. Just tighten the bow as much as you can. Find where your loops are and just go at it and tighten it. And you'll see your floral pick will stay the same in there, so just tighten. You can pull this here, pull that there. That's the wrong side, so find Every bow has a, the part that's slack and the part that goes into your um, into the middle of the knot. So what I'm doing here is I'm just twisting my ribbon to get it facing the right way. Which way is that? There we go. And again, it's very forgiving because this is wired ribbon, guys. It's very forgiving. You can ball it all up and it'll be fine. So let me find, where's my bow? These two pieces are what tightens the actual bow. So I'm going to pull that tight, okay? So I've pulled that really tight, and you can see here your floral pin has become part of the back of that bow. Your floral pin is now that piece of the bow, okay? Now what I'm looking at here is these loops are way too big. You see here, I'm not, nothing has to be identical, but they're obviously way bigger than this one, okay? So what you do from here is, and again, it's still connected to the spool. I'm just going to kind of pull on the tail. You just adjust your ribbon loops your bow loops to the size you, you know you want them to be. You don't want them to be gigantic, but I also don't want them to be too small. So that one I made a little bit too small. I'm going to pull that back out and adjust a little bit more. You've got slack in here. I'm holding it with the floral pins between my two fingers here, and I'm just pulling on these tails left and right, left and right, kind of adjusting each side, seeing how I want it. This one's a pretty good size here. This one needs to be a little bit bigger. And I think I'm pretty good and happy with that. Now remember, this does not have to be identical. This does not have to be perfect. This is just somewhat, some, you'll have somewhat of an identical piece on each side, but they'll be different in their own way. And it's okay if they don't look the same. But I'm very happy with these sizes. So I'm going to, again, take my pieces that are going into the knot and tighten them. Just pull them real tight, guys. Pull them so tight. Pull them really hard. And that's pretty much it. So now your bow is where it's at. If you want to throw some hot glue back here, go for it. I didn't because I didn't think it's necessary for where I'm hanging this piece. Again, if you guys want to purchase one of these, I will make it in a heartbeat for you. And I will definitely secure everything with hot glue because I don't know where you're going to place them. And I also don't know what type of um, climate you may live on, so on, that type of thing. So what I'm going to do here is, since this is this wreath will be on the left, that's basically the bow, guys. So I'm going to zoom back out. Oops, that's in. Sorry, new camera, guys, new camera. So I'm going to zoom back out. And you'll see, this is how we're going to finish it. Super easy, super simple. So I'll show you. I've got my, my left wreath here. Here's my right guy here. This is where I'm going to put this on. Now, I've got a longer tail on the inside and a shorter tail on the outside of this guy. Uh, we'll figure that out once I get this on here. So all I've done is I've picked my cotton placement kind of a little bit down here. And I'm feeling around. If you push in, you can feel around where the actual wreath form is. And I want to make sure I have it right in the center of that form. So pick that spot, and then you're going to take your floral pin that exists in here and just place that on either side of that and push it in, and just my bow loops. And that's not going anywhere, guys. That is not going anywhere. If Again, if you're kind of nervous about it, throw a little bit of glue, and there's no harm in that. I'll throw some glue on that right there. So there, I've glued on that side and that side. Um, 
just again for for security I didn't do it over here I'll do it over here I'll just throw a dab of glue right underneath there so that um, that cotton picks not going anywhere it's it's very thick in there as far as it's dense the piece you're putting your floral pin into so it's not going to go anywhere so now here's where we're going to make our, our ribbon tails and then we're finished guys if you want them to be even make them even if you want them to be a little crazy or off then do that so what I've done is this one's a little bit shorter this is a little bit longer so I'm going to cut this one just a bit longer than this tail here on the outside and again when you dovetail guys I'll show you how to do it you take your pieces you fold them in on themselves then you're going to hold it and you're going to cut diagonally and since I'm holding this down I have to cut down right here if you see you're going to hold this down and cut from the folded edge towards your wired edge at a diagonal. Make sure that's longer. And then that's it. And then there's your there's your dovetail. That's it. Now this is a lot longer than this guy is over here, but I like it. I don't I don't mind it. It makes me happy. And that's it guys, so here's the two matching wreaths. So that was actually a very quick project, and I know a lot of you, that's pretty quick for me, right? So that's it, there's your finished pieces. I've got two matching wreaths that are gonna go on either side of, actually like this, they're gonna go on either side of my um, pretty farmhouse uh, sign that I bought. Let me pull this back up. Hi guys. So. That's it for today. Um, it was a little, kind of a short video. I didn't have time to do a Facebook Live this week. I'm so sorry, you guys. But remember, I've got lots of stuff planned, a lot of Easter stuff. I've got a really good um, Easter lantern swag planned. I got the supplies for that yesterday when I got the supplies for this. Um, I really wish I could have done a Facebook Live, you guys. I'm really sorry if you disappointed you, but I will be back at it. I'm not quitting. I just have a job and, <laughs> and you know, groceries and a house. And, you know, it's, it's you guys, you guys know, you guys understand. You guys are all doing the same thing. Um, it just, every once in a while, those weeks get, a, get away from you. And a lot of people are actually sick right now. The flu is going around, so I'm knocking on wood, washing my hands, all that kind of stuff so I don't get sick. Because I don't want to have to take time off completely. I want to do something almost every week. And I've been able to stick to that schedule. So I hope I can stick to that schedule for you guys. But there's the end piece, you guys. Here's the two wreaths. And they're going to look super cute on either side of this. So um, that's the end of this video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go have my husband hang this. And that's what he's going to... Well, there we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> that was an alarm on my phone. So what I'm going to do is have my husband hang this uh, beautiful sign outside. Or sorry. Outside this room is outside, guys, right? Um, I'm going to have him hang this beautiful sign above there. I'm going to put these two guys around there. We'll take some pictures. I'll get my lights out. And I'll have that right here at the end of this video. And then I'll also see that if you guys want to follow me on Instagram and Facebook, you'll see some more pictures there too. Um, keep up the uh, support. I love all of your comments. I love all your ideas, your tips. You guys have been great to me. Um, again, I am going to Wreath Makers Live in Texas uh, this June. So if there's anything you guys want custom orders, I would love to make them. I'm going to need the help. Um, it's kind of a pricey trip, but I know I'm going to learn so many things I can bring back and uh, utilize, show you guys some stuff. And um, I can't wait to see what happens. And, um, oh, that was my dog. Do you guys see that? You guys want to say hi to Zoe? Come here, Zoe. Come on. Come here. Let's say bye. Come on. I forgot I had her in here with me, guys. Oh, there we go. Just me and Zoe today. I forgot she was in here with me. <laughs> she was asleep in the little doggy bed over there. She's a good girl. So this is one of two, if you're just now, you know, joining me, it's your first time. This is one of two. So there's my, my shameless plug for my babies. So th again, thanks you guys so much for joining me today. We made a really pretty wreath. Um, I love everything you guys do. Send me pictures. I love seeing it. If you make one yourself, obviously send that to me on my Facebook page. There's links to it in my description uh, below of this video. And... You know, until next time, you guys, take care. Bye-bye.